Throughout my first semester at St. Joseph's University, I have been exposed to all sorts of outlooks in communication practice and theory. In the various readings we have discussed, some authors seem to have different views than others, but there is one central theme among them. This world is one that is ever-changing, now more rapidly than ever. Luckily, we can use patterns collected from past data to help us predict what the future holds. Over the course of the semester, there have been some readings that have provoked thought and led me to question where exactly our society is headed. Others have been real head-scratchers, leaving me unable to see eye-to-eye -eye with the author or creator of a certain writing or video. Taking in all this information has helped me to form my own opinion about what parts of technology are helpful or useful and what parts aren't so necessary. In 2008, Michael West released an anthropological introduction to YouTube, which highlighted what was basically the history of YouTube as of 2008. Early on, he mentions that the traditional neighborhood community is vanishing, and the only things holding it together are main roads, superstores, and televisions. He explains that with our cell phones, we are now experiencing a time where each of us are feeling a sort of collective identity, something called cultural inversion, where we are valuing community while expressing individualism, a time where we crave independence but still want to fill voids with relationships. Some may say that the idea of online communities are superior to suburban communities. In a class reading by Bain, we learn that telephones allow us to be in one place but have our mind in a conversation hundreds of miles away with another person. While we're on our new and improved telephones, smartphones, we're able to communicate with just about any other person on the planet. In communication practice and theory, we have been able to stay in touch mainly through a website, which outlines our readings, emails that notify us of any changes or updates to the class schedule, and Twitter, which allows us to contact our professor at almost any reasonable hour. Going deeper, almost all of our homework and papers have been done through online submissions. Sometimes we've even been asked to log into a Google Doc in order to go to class rather than being in the physical classroom. Initially, I found this strange, but once a few questions were asked, it was incredible to see the overwhelming response from each and every person in the Google Doc. Afterwards, it seemed that most of our class could agree that it was a fun way to hold class. This type of response from the class was something that we had not yet experienced in the physical classroom, so clearly there is a part of ourselves that we are only able to tap into when behind a keyboard, leaving ourselves less vulnerable and giving ourselves more time to put our thought down and read it before submitting it to everyone. In 2010, Kirby Ferguson released Everything is a Remix, which detailed the progression of art and science through an intricate way of copying. Ferguson explained how every form of creativity is derived from a previous work. Whether it be art, science, or business, great ideas do not spawn out of nowhere. This video crossed over well with our class assignment to find 10 conventions in each of our areas of blogging. In order to be able to put together worthwhile posts about the NFL, I would have to remix some of the writing that is available on popular sports websites such as ESPN or Bleacher Report. Clearly, I would have to put my own twist on things as well as use all the conventions of sports blogging to my benefit. When Michael West released the, the Machine is Us or Using Us, he was referring to the nature of the online community and how it supports itself. This class has been an example of how we are the machine and how it is using us. Each week, each student in our class would make the system stronger by making blog posts and using Twitter among many other apps in an effort to stay in the loop. We have taken a lot of information over the past months, but it is nowhere near the type of information the machine has gained from our learning experience. Each week, I would have to be creative and come up with hot button NFL topics to write about. Initially, my blog was simple. I would cover some, some of the most competitive games of the previous or upcoming week. Other times, I would try to focus on a single player who had been performing well lately. After a few weeks, it became apparent that merely focusing on the premier teams in the NFL would not cut it. I had to dig deeper, analyze the teams in the middle of the pack, and explain why they were there. This was a challenge that I, w that I willingly assigned myself. My first few posts were challenging in the sense that I was getting used to blogging, but when I asked more out of myself, the rewards became evident. In order to form well-educated opinions on teams, it was necessary for me to consider all types of statistics and trends on a week-to-week -week basis. Going further, I found myself studying each team each week in order to make sure I could write it with firm credibility. Cindy Self explains the differences between literate and illiterate segments of society. She tells us that people who are literate members of society have high levels of technological literacy skills and that our country's wealth is greatly affected by the people with these skills, especially when considering wealth and employment. On the other hand, people that are considered amongst to be amongst the those illiterate segments our of society spend their days doing some of the least desirable jobs there are to offer. The relevance of digital literacy is increasing, increasing each day. Our phone diary assignment shows exactly how often we use our phones, and more importantly, why we use them. 
This was an interesting experience to help my understanding of how my phone is involved in my life on a daily basis. Staying involved online each week has allowed me to expand my digital literacy beyond what I knew. It has been fun to remain in the loop with an area of blogging that highlights my interests, making it an exciting point in my week each time I post, rather than a drag. Though I will miss my blog, it has laid a great foundation for my maturation as a digitally literate person. At the start of the semester, I had never blogged or tweeted, and now I can comfortably say I feel like a seasoned veteran in those fields. Okay.